or welcome to another episode of the BPN in conversations with series. Now, as you know, our series this year, the theme is dare to dream. During this series, you're going to be hearing from some remarkable black and ethnic minority leaders from various industries who have dared to achieve their own professional dreams. Now, you also know that our vision here at the BPN is to empower all black and ethnic minority professionals everywhere to advance in their careers and to achieve their potential. So our intention with these conversations is to inspire you to do just that. And with me here today is Dr. Apollinaire Etundi from the University of West of England. And I'm going to be talking to him about his own personal and professional journey to where he is today. Hello, Dr. Apol Apollinaire. Hello, Kiki, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure, my pleasure. Okay, um, as you know, I'm going to ask you a series of questions because we want to get to know you and how you got to where you are today. So the first question I want to uh, ask you is, tell us a little bit about what you do and how you got to the, got into it. Okay, so, um, so I'm a senior lecturer in mechatronics, as you correctly said, at the University of West of England. And I'm also a researcher at, in the Bristol Robotics Laboratory, which is the actual UK largest facility for Robotics, yeah. Oh. Um, so um, what I'm what I'm going to say I'm doing on a daily basis is really teaching and researching, really on engineering, on robotics, and also on mechatronics. But more importantly, applying what I know of in terms of robotics and engineering um, towards people. So really for rehabilitation and how can we, let's just say, enable people who did not have or have lost, you know, their mobility. Um, actually giving them back to them because they, they actually want to feel like everybody else. So part of my research is really about bringing the technology that we are so proud of these days as engineers, as researchers, to the people that actually needs it the most. And there are a lot of them out there. So yeah. And so teaching obviously means that I have a, a bunch of students that I'm uh, you know, managing and I uh, under various different projects and uh, to whom I also teach on mechatronics and more importantly on how can we develop smart systems. Yeah, so that's what I do mainly, yeah. I want to know more, what is mechatronics? <sighs> Gosh, so you're probably gonna have me then for another two hours because I, uh, that's, you know, that's what I, I basically teach. So mechatronics really is, um, some people would say it's a new field of engineering. Some people would say it's a methodology. I see mechatronics really as an approach, an app, almost like a, a philosophy, a way of conceiving systems, the way we are developing smart systems and systems that we call now autonomous or independent. But at the very core of mechatronics, you would have four different fields of engineering, which are mechanical, electrical, computer science, and control engineering. All of them brought together in, and this is a very important word now, synergy, which means in harmony. So you would uh, not just stack them on top of each other, because otherwise you end up with a system which is way too complex and that you can't really optimize. But more, but you would what you would really do here is to manage to manage the complexity of the system by ensuring that communication occur accordingly, and by doing that, ultimately improving or enhancing the product functionality. So that could be applied to anything, to robotics, to also, um, I would say, daily appearances, such as your washing machine, Kiki. Guess what? Mm -hmm. It is an actual mechatronics device because wow. what it has incorporated is a front panel to which you just press the buttons and you think that you're actually talking to the machine. But what you're actually doing is sending information to the machine that will then be processed, will be then acted upon through actuation, and then eventually you would have your clothes to be you know, washed or dried and so on. So you will need some sensors that would detect what's going on inside. Mm -hmm. And then feeding that information all the way back to the control system that will then reprocess and recalculate the best thing to do. So that's a very good example of megatronics here, washing machine or a robot. That was, that was, you made that sound so simple. Oh, really? well, that's why that's what you're right. a lecturer. Because <laughs> you, you impart knowledge and make it sound so simple. <laughs> well, I hope, I, hope, I hope that was simple. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, Yeah. no, I, I got that. I completely got that. Well, how did you get into what you're doing now? Well, Mechatronics, doing now, yeah. robotics, all of it. How did you get yeah, into so, it? Yeah, so, well, I guess probably I need to take you about a couple of years back. So when I was a very little child, I used to enjoy Kinder Surprise. You remember the chocolate? You remember the, the, egg, the eggs? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so I was I was completely found for both the two things, the chocolate, but more importantly, the little toy you had inside, you know, where you had to make up, you know, the toys and uh, you know build it yourself. 
And I remember my, my dad used to say, you know, don't, don't eat, eat all the chocolate, uh, you know, to off your brothers, you know, make sure that, you know, they, they still have their chocolate and also leave them with their toys. That's their toys. Um, but I always enjoyed making things, building things when I was a, when I was a little boy. Then one day I asked, you know, my dad said, um, asked my dad, so how are these people actually make things? And he said, well, these guys are engineers. You know, they make things, they build things. And this is how I think the, the whole, uh, you know, my whole career sort of took the direction he, he, he took then, because um, I've always been interested in testing things, building things, making things better. So that's, that has been always the sort of the, uh, the, the main goal in what I've been doing. And um, then one thing leading to another, then I ended up doing some engineering studies uh, and then getting my master in France. And at the same time, um, I was also doing uh, the master degree here in, at the University of Bristol. And uh, one thing again leading to another, I ended up doing a PhD in bio-inspired robotics. So that could take another hour to talk to you about bio-inspired robotics. But let's just say that what it does essentially is extracting beneficial functions from nature and conveying them uh, into technology with the technology that we've got available now. So looking at the solutions that we've got in nature and identifying the, the ones that we can actually implement, which are not too complex, but, but I would say smart enough to make the systems that we are developing within the technological world to be solving for particular problems that we've got now. Um, and yeah, and that ultimately then that PhD led me then to have my lectureship here at the University of the West of England, which actually happened at a very blessed timing here that we can maybe talk about a bit later, but yeah. Wow, that, that just all sounds so awesome. It was just a right with a kinder egg, didn't it? Yes, exactly. <laughs> you, know, you see, I should, I should really get in touch with them and say how thankful I am, you know. I know, right? Yeah, they yeah. inspired you. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so, well, I imagine along the journey, this long mm -hmm. journey you've just told us, um, yes. You have encountered some challenges, some barriers. So yeah. what are the strategies that you have used along the way to deal with those challenges or barriers that you encountered along the way? Yeah, I would say, um, well, my, my dad has always been the one telling me that um, if, you, if you want something, work hard. And if you really want something, work harder, you know, work harder. And always, always strive um, for, sorry about that. That is something that I was not anticipating at all. My phone ringing. Um, so... Yeah, so work harder. So what he, he then said to me, he said, um, um, always bear in mind that if you aim for the moon, you will reach the stars. So um, one, one thing that I've always had in the uh, you know, back of my mind whenever I was studying or I was you know, undertaking some research was always, um, don't, I, I should not just limit myself to what I can see or what I can do. There's always more that can be done if, if, if I just put the right effort for it. You know? So it's really, really about how... Um, my, your capacity to undertake what you are called to take or to do, but then always striving for, well, if I can do that, maybe I can do a little extra more, you know, a little extra, a little extra. And, you know, step by step, you know, as they say, you make the impossible possible. Yeah. There we go. That sounds awesome. I mean, I'm taking notes as well because I love learning from all the people that I, that I talk to. Don't limit yourself. So, so you see the things beyond what you can currently see yeah. right now. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's awesome. So what then drives you to just keep going? What, keep what going. drives you? Well, I want to say that, um, well, first of all, I think a, um, a big family, because I grew up in a, in a big family of, um, of four different child and, and the parents, have, um, has always had a great impact on my way to, to see the world. Um, so wherever I was, you know, wherever I was interacted with or the people I was encountering, I, um, I always tend to, to think that when, when I'm in the middle of a group of people, um, there's always something that I can learn from, from the people around me. Something that um, I always very cherish is also the fact that um, my, my parents always taught me to um, always look beyond what uh, others, others are actually telling you, because there's always more that can be done or that you can actually, you know, look for. Um, it's, um, it's a natural gift to look at life this way because it's really easy to just look at it the wrong way and, you know, you're always you know, feeling very gloomy and, and feeling a bit down on yourself. But if you just look at the glass half full instead of half empty, you know, it just changed the whole perspective that you have on the world and on people. And then, you know, you, you know everything becomes really possible for you and for, your, for your, the people around you as well, you know. So that's, um, it's not just about yourself, then it becomes also about the example you can give to other people so that they may see that oh actually if he can do it well surely i can do it as well mm. so so there's two things there so what one or more than one more than two mm -hmm. things actually yeah. so one of them was your parents basically taught, taught taught you to always see that there's 
plenty of possibilities. Yes, yes. And then you then pass that on in the sense that, well, if you set as an, an, a good example for other people, because mm -hmm. if you can achieve it, they can too. They can, yeah. yeah and absolutely. that's exactly what we're doing here, because that's why we're talking to you to show other people that, hey, <laughs> Amazing. If, if Dr. <laughs> Apollonia can do it, hey, you could too. <laughs> you can do it as well, you know. Yeah, you can definitely, you know, work with robots one day. I'm sure you can. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Sky is the limit. Sky is the limit. <laughs> um, so what what was your greatest growth moment in your career and what events led to it? Oh gosh, I think I think there probably will be almost like a threefold uh, answer here because mm -hmm. there is a, a personal growth, then there has been a professional growth, and now I think is more like um um more like a spiritual growth as well mm -hmm. that I'm now into. So the first one, it. yeah, the first one was um I would say the um the really the personal growth was um being, you know, again, with uh, 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 my, my family was, has always been, um, I would say, a gift for me so that I always, I was always, you know, supported at the moments where I was feeling really, below, you know, below, below zero uh, throughout my studies, throughout, you know, um, the all different stages of my life. So um, there has been really an actual growth in terms of becoming uh, the person that I am today, thanks to the people that I've been living with, um, you know, help, you know, being, you know, my, my, my family and also the, the friends that I've uh, encountered throughout the years. Um, then what I then would say is throughout the course of this, uh, this growth, this personal growth, uh, as I was, um, you know, going for my studies and, you know, uh, working harder and harder to, to just get a degree and everything, came the uh, professional growth where one day I encountered uh, someone who will be, who will become the gold medalist at the Paralympic Games in Rio 2016. So I didn't know the guy would nice. be obviously that uh, such um, you know uh, a famous guy at, at that time. Uh, who he was was someone that I bumped into in the Bradley Stoke Sports Centre uh, here in, in Bristol. And uh, me being uh, me having just finished my PhD and starting just my lectureship here at the University of the West of England, um, I was a bit noisy. And um, I saw him sat by the side of the swimming pool, and um, I, I realized he was an amputee. He was an above knee amputee, so he didn't have. Um, half of his leg. Uh, but what he has next to him was a, a, a prosthetic joint, which was a very, a piece of, a very interesting piece of engineering. And again, me being very noisy and a, a, bit, a, bit, a bit of a nerd, you know, with engineering, I sort of came next to him and I said, do you mind if I have a look at what you've got here? And he obviously looked at me and said, uh, yeah, sure, you know, yeah, wh why not? Um, why are you so interested in this? And I said, oh yeah, sorry, I'm, a, I'm actually uh, working at the Bristol Robotics Lab and, and I make joints for, um, uh, for humanoid robots, because this was my PhD was about, uh, bio-inspired bio robotics for humanoid robots. So how can, how can we make humanoid robots more human-like? So he heard me saying that and he went, okay, so you make joints for machines then? <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I do. Yeah, trying to make them more human-like, you know, more like us. And then he said to me the, the, the phrase that then made me realize that what I've been doing so far could actually be, could, could have been applied to and could have had a much greater purpose. He said, okay, what about us humans without a leg that can't actually walk like other human beings? Can you do something about that? Oh. I took a moment just to look at him and I realized that I was actually talking to someone who doesn't have an actual joint, the kind of joint that I have been developing throughout my PhD and I could actually make them relevant to people to people who actually need it now. So that, that was an eye opener on my career. And I realized that actually, yeah, I, I could potentially, yeah, do that. Um, I could make a joint that would allow you to walk more like, like human, like all the normal people. Uh, and, and then he said to me, he said, uh, well, where, where, where do we start? I said, well, First of all, who are you? Hang on. I, I, who are you? What, what are you doing here? I said, well, I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually training for the Paralympic Games in Rio this year. I said, okay, well, you know what? If you get, if you get there and if you win, uh, we may be talking again, see, about how we can move this research forward. Guess what? He came back with the gold medal, you know, winning it. And he said, aha, what no do we do way. now? So I said, well, we're going to sit down and we're going to write a proposal to get funding for this research. So that's what we did. We sat down and then we managed to get a, a two years uh, funding for developing the very first bio-inspired prosthetic knee joint based on his human features, based on his dimension, on his bones, on his ligaments. Um, and that was, you know, an, an amazing journey that has actually led this whole thing to 
Unfortunately, as he always goes with any stories, to end up having him to be trialing and testing the joints for Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games, which obviously didn't happen because of COVID. So he never had the chance to actually test the joints for the um, for the Olympic Games. Uh, but you know, he's, he's, he's still you know he's still training, and we are actually still discussing about how he's going to be using it for different competitions. So it's still kind of ongoing, I say, still ongoing. But um, yeah, that was the. I'm going to say the, the very growth moment in my professional career. That um, was and an then, inspirational story. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> then there's the third four that I was saying, the spiritual growth, where I would say, I would actually say, yeah, I think mo most people wouldn't say that, but I'm going to say it. Thanks to the pandemic, thanks to the pandemic, I have had the immense chance to grow my spiritual family to, a, to a, an international level. So we, um, uh, me being a Catholic, um, uh, practic I'm a practicing Catholic uh, man, I had uh, the chance to uh, get in touch with uh, some people who decided to just, um, you know, pray together and spend some time um, to look at the, the, the gospel, to look at the word of God. And what we decided to do was just, you know what, we can't actually meet with each other, but we can still pray for one another. You know, that doesn't stop us from doing that. And we can also read the word of God. And what about living out the values of the gospel where we are? What about becoming better people with the people around us? What about loving our neighbor, loving the people around us, making us aware of the people who are marginalized in our society? So therefore, I ended up helping at the food bank here in Bristol um, in St. Nicholas of Tolentino's church, which was one of the few places still open during COVID, during the very harsh lockdown. Because obviously one thing that people maybe have forgotten is that uh, when we were asked to stay inside, where well, some people on the street were were not allowed, were well, not able to do that. They, they didn't have an needed, insight to stay in. Uh, exactly, in such place. So, and they still needed oh. food and they still needed help. So, San Nicolas Salentino was among the few places that stayed open and decided to, no, we're going to stay open, we're going to help the poor. And, and yeah, I just decided to go and help them. And we created an actual network where we had people happy to donate, but not really willing to you know, go to the food bank in in uh, in, in Eastern where San Nicolas of Tolentino is 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 based. Uh, so I ended up just saying, do you know what? If you are, if you have something to offer or to if you want me to collect, I'll go and grab my car and I'll just come and collect it from you. So you know, that again has been another an, an immense growth um, of our um, I would say my spiritual family, which has actually turned into an actual ministry called the uh, Love Verbum Day Ministry, meaning having the threefold of reading, praying, and living out the gospel, uh, where we all are respectively, which means in the UK, in France, in India, in Los Angeles, in Uganda, in Malawi, in, um, in, in other places as well, where we have people doing their little bits where they are respectively. So there we go. Yeah. That's, that's just remarkable. That's awesome. Well, thank I'd you for say, sharing thank, that. I'd say, I'd say thanks <laughs> be to God for that. Definitely. Oh, that's awesome. You're always <laughs> so humble. I mean, because I, I know you outside of this because you're always so humble. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for that, Dr. Apollinaire. So yeah. you've answered quite a bit of the questions that have we I? have in okay. line for you. So okay. I'm going to jump a few uh, yeah, questions yeah. ahead. Sure. So based on your experience, what practical advice would you give to our BPN members mm -hmm. um, to inspire them to dare to dream to go after their, their own professional goals? Well, I would say um, as a, an advice really would be, you know, the advice that I've received that I'm, I would just, you know, pass on to, 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 to people on the BPE really network, which would be, you know, always um, strive for more, you know, don't limit your, really don't limit yourself to what people are saying, what people are trying to impose on you. There is always a way through. There's always a way through. Dream, dream big, you know, dream the dream, dream big, and eventually do the baby steps that will allow you to make the impossible possible. Um, my, my father told me when I left uh, for, for the university, he said, uh, he said to me, he said, look, um, there's one thing in life that will, um, you, you, cannot, you cannot replace is your life itself. Your life is beautiful and you can make it beautiful if you go live it to the full and be the best. Now at that time, what I thought was, oh, that means I have to be the best of the best and I've got to be, you know, the most ambitious and the, but what I've actually skipped from the rest of the sentence was be the best you can be, be the best you can be. That's Not really worrying about who is next to you, but just be the best in what you're doing, in the people that you're meeting, in, in the people that you are encountering, people at work, people in, in, in church, the people that you will meet in, on the streets, you know, be the best you can be with them because there, we really there dwells what 
what is the most beautiful thing in life, which is love. And love is the only thing that actually pass on, no matter what. If you think about it, when I'll be reaching the end of my life, so it's going to sound a bit, a bit, a bit daunting now, I'll, I, the only thing that I'll be able to pass really is the love that I've shared with my family, with mm -hmm. my friends. That love will be then passed on to the other generation, to another generation, and so on. And that's, that's to me, you know, what is really important here is really striving for what is best for yourself and for the other, you know, really for, your, for the other and for yourself. And then other than that, you know, it's, it's just, I would say, uh, publicity. The rest is just publicity. The rest is just advertisements. But <laughs> really what really matters is the way, the way you undertake, what you're undertaking and just strive for, yeah, the, the best you can. Yeah. That's, that's profound. Thank you for sharing that. Thank uh, you. Well, for, I, I mean, guys, I hope you're taking, I hope you're writing notes because I <laughs> am. And I've just, I've just written my own notes. Try for more. Don't limit yourself. Dream big and then take baby steps. Thank you for sharing that. That is profound advice. I will be my taking repetitive. that on. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me now, Dr. Yes. Apollonia, what is your favorite quote if you have one? Oh, I would probably say, um, I would have to go with my dad's one because that's the one I've been having, you know, for, for, for all those years, you know, the, the, the go live your life and be the best would be, would be the one. Now, um, one that I quite like because it's, it does show um, that you can, there's, there's so much to offer. There's more, there's actually more to give than you, that, that there is to, to receive as, as, uh, as actually Sanjay Paul II would say, um, the, the love that we can give is more than the love that we can receive. That is purely the economy of love. The more you mm. give it, the more you will receive it. And it's, it's immense. As soon as you start thinking of, yeah, whatever good deed that I do every day is actually a little seed of that love that would eventually grow in people's you know, life or in people's situation. The smile that you're giving to someone on the bus may be the only smile that a person is going to have today and thinking that they've actually bounded in a way with someone. Mm -hmm. um, we, are, we are in these days in such a society that is really trying to limit you know, our you know, contact, the interaction between us that we can really become really isolated, but not just the actual isolation, the physical isolation, but the very deep psychological isolation. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we are not creatures that were meant to be just isolating. Absolutely right. not. I think, I think we are meant to be you know, interacting with each other and learning from each other. The, the, that doesn't mean that we're going to agree with each other, obviously not, but there is always a room to elevate the debate to a greater truth. You know, I'm not, I never try to convince you. I want us to elevate both of us to the greater truth so that we may recognize it and acknowledge that actually I never thought about that. Oh, do you know what? I didn't think about it neither, but that's, that's beautiful because we're not looking towards both of us towards the same and ultimate truth. That is so beautiful. I mean, I'm, I think I just need to record, just take that bit and just put it somewhere <laughs> online so we can all listen to that every day. Well, that is so beautiful. And that is part of the mission of what we're doing here mm -hmm. at the BPM because our aim is to connect. It's not to separate, it's to connect. And that's one I'm of sure. the big umbrellas of what BPN preaches yeah. is connecting people, connecting okay. people's experiences. And here we're sharing yours and connecting you to, to um, our audience and they will feel more connected to you by hearing your story. So thank you for sharing so. that beautiful message. Oh, well, it's been my pleasure, my real pleasure. Absolutely. Okay, so now tell me, do you have a book or a thought leader mm -hmm. who has inspired you the most in your professional life? In professional life, I would probably go with um, what would, I think I've always had like, um, people always look towards when it comes to professional career. And um, these would be my uh, professors at universities where, you know, I would say, you know, it, they are the ones that are, you know, are teaching me what I need to know of, what I need to know in terms of, you know, my, 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 my professional career. Um, now, in terms of actual um, leaders, uh, that I would say um, the one that I can easily think of would be, um, uh, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King, obviously, is one of you know the ones that I would say you know is uh, has always been you know among the names that I've uh, I've heard of. Um, now, um, someone as well that I've, I would definitely say as well has been um, among the people that have helped me to grow in terms of um, yeah how to remember the dignity of human beings um, would actually be yeah um, you know Malcolm X you know is is among the ones that I would say has a uh, he actually nourish and he very cherished the dignity of human beings. Among all the speeches that he may have been given, I would say that what he was really always striving for was we need to be recognized as human beings, as people. 
we we are people as everybody else. So I would say, you know, these these two names really would be the ones, um, you know, that I've always had in mind when it comes to you know be growing as an individual and always striving for um, what what the others might not see, what the others might not see. He may just be parking you in a in a box or or trying to put you in a particular corner, but you know, the, the, there's there's more than one box. You know, there's That's more right. than one box, um, and do not again don't let other people lim limit yourself you know you don't let other people make you or have you to be what they want you to be you know you are who you are for a reason you were a place where you've been placed for a reason and you have your own mission that might not be the mission that they see at the moment because they are too limited or maybe they are narrow minded or maybe they just don't see you as you really are so um you know i would say that the, these two are the big names that i've had you know uh, over the years really yeah that's awesome i feel like we've had quite a few conversations about the box like i've been i've been interviewing people throughout this series and we have this conversation about people putting you in a box or putting uh -huh, you in a uh -huh. particular identity and i feel yeah. like maybe we should do a series on that how do we unpack this box <laughs> i agree i agree i mean I, I couldn't just agree more really here because um it's it's really easy to sort of um you know uh, uh get yourself trapped into uh what other people think of you and mm -hmm. and, and the way you're you, sometimes even the box that you put in yourself, you know, that's, that's, right. that's another one. Um, because sometimes uh, people realize, or, or sometimes you don't even realize that the enemy is not just outside. The enemy might actually be the inner me. That's right. You know, the one inside of me, it might actually be the enemy. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's that, that, yeah, boxes needs to be unpacked and they needs to be removed. 100 so may free up ourselves, you know, from, from whatever, you know, let other people are thinking. And again, you know, as it says, you know, in the uh, the Acts of the Apostles, you know, there is, um, you know, through the gospel, it, this is what it's all about. You know, there's no more Jews, no more Greeks, no more no more pagans. It's we are all one. We are all united. There's one. We are all united in diversity. That's which is right. what I like really as well. You know, we're all That's one right. in diversity. Yeah. I love that. Mm. Right, Dr. Apollonia, as we come to the end of your question today, I have one fun question for you to answer. Oh, really? So, okay, go for it. Since our theme for this series is Dare to Dream, mm -hmm. if you could have any superhero power, oh, what yeah. power would you choose and why? Oh dear, okay. Superpower. I would probably say being invincible would be a good power. You know, why? not being, not letting anything external to me wound myself. So be able to heal, you know, quickly. Yeah, that'd say that's a that probably say it's a it's, it's a power that I would like to have if I was a superhero. Yeah, that's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome being able to heal yourself and not letting yes. things penetrate. That's yes. awesome. Exactly. Mm. Oh, Dr. Apollinet, thank you so much for sharing this time with us. I have no, learned so much from you. And guys, I hope if you're listening that you have also learned tons from the wisdom that Dr. Apollinet has shared with us today. So. Thank you, thank you for sharing you. this session thank with us. Thank you for running this interview. You've done it brilliantly. And oh, I really enjoyed spending that time with you. I hope, <laughs> hope the viewers and listeners will also have enjoyed that. That was really Oh, good. I hope so too. <laughs> yeah, thank thank you. you. Right, guys, that's a wrap from me. So you know what to do next. Take the notes, take the wisdom from Dr. Apollinari. This is not my words. These are his words. Strive for more. That's it. That's what we're asking you to do. We're challenging you here with this series to dare to dream. And yes, I use that word, challenging you to dare to dream. So guys, that's a wrap from me. You know what to do. Subscribe on our mailing list. Um, follow us on Facebook. Join our group. <music>